In this video, I'm going to talk about various features available within the managed environment in Microsoft Power Platform. Now, managed environment is a suite of premium capabilities that allows an admin to manage Power Platform environment at scale. You know, admin gets an independent control, minimal effort, and gets gains rich insights of what's happening within the environment. Any environment type can be converted into a managed environment. Now, this recording is of October 2023. There are more or less 16 features available in the managed environment. As you see in the screen below, we can select an environment in the Power Platform Admin Center and we can enable the managed environment. Likewise, once the, enab once the enablement of managed environment is done, then we can edit the managed environment properties. Now, what are the different feature sets available in managed environment till date? So that's of October 2023, 30th. Now, there are 16 features. Now, I'm not going to go in much depth because I'm going to cover each and every 16 features in a different video in much detail. But this video is just to give a glimpse of how many features exist within the managed environment. So uh, there are features like welcome content for makers, limit sharing, usage insights, data policies, ALM pipelines, default environment routing, solution checker, IP firewall, IP cookie binding, customer managed key, Lockbox, Extended Backup, Desktop Flow DLP, App Insights Data Export, Power Platform Catalog, App Description with Copilot. So let's uh, look into what is Make a Welcome Content. Now, this is uh, a very simple uh, message for the users who uh, gets onboarded to your environment. So Make a Welcome Content basically provides a welcome message to the maker. Now, this make welcome message can be customized by the admin and uh, the characters which can we can type over here is uh, i've seen like it's 1500 characters max and you can access this url uh, by you know like by going into uh, power apps homepage and under learn you will see a section called as from your org from here you can access the uh, make a welcome content message now here, as in when you access the make a welcome content for the first time, you will see this and you can turn this off this message by clicking on the checkbox over here. So this is basically about make a welcome content. Moving on to next limit sharing. Limit sharing is all about adding a guardrail on how broadly the users can share the canvas app. Now the share limit is limited to 99 or less users. So uh, it will help you uh, uh, identify that this particular app uh, or specific app within your organization cannot be shared with more than say 100 users okay and also you can exclude sharing with the security group so this is about helping reducing the risk by limiting how widely the canvas app can be shared within your organization usage insights now usage insights will give you uh, a basically a weekly digest summary email containing uh, how many active apps exist, how many active flow exists, how many active app users exist. Plus, it will uh, show you some instruction based on cleaning up of this app flows and the most popular apps of flow within your organization. Data policies. Now, data policies can be easily identified and accessed for the managed environment. Now, the data policies define the consumer connectors that data can be shared with. The environment filter is basically exclusively only available for environment which is managed. Now, if you go into the data policies and if you click on a manage environment, then you will exactly see what all policies are being applied for that specific environment. Now, this is about data loss prevention policy. ALM pipelines. Now, I have covered this in a separate detailed video. You can have a look into that. Now, ALM pipelines is basically providing you a platform to implement pipelines so that you can deploy your solution from dev test to prod okay now the there is an app called as deployment pipeline configuration as you see over here now this particular app will allow you to configure the user profile it will help you set up the environment it help you set up the pipelines it can help you view the run history solution artifacts and all those things and it will guide you through the journey of moving in a solution from uh, one environment to another environment and the environment you can define as dev, test, stage, prod, UAT or whatever you like as per your organization's policies. So default environment routing. Default environment routing automatically directs new makers into their own personal developer environment. 
Default environment routing is a premium governance feature that allows admin to direct new makers into their own personal dev environment when they access Power App site for the first time. Now, default environment routing is a tenant level admin setting. Now, uh, remember, the users in managed developer environment must have a premium license to run the Power Platform assets. Now, default environment routing is basically when a new user logs into the system uh, rather than being redirected to the default environment to author apps flows, they will be redirected to their uh, own developer environment, whereby within that developer environment, they can start building apps flows uh, and all those Power Platform related components. Solution Checker. Solution Checker enforces rich static analysis validation during the solution import. It identifies the critical high and medium severity issues during the import of a solution. Now, I have imported some couple of solutions uh, and I have found that for some solution, I, uh, I got an email uh, citing the critical severity issues found, high severity issues found, medium severity issues found, and you can view the results from here. Uh, you will receive an email notification for every solution input within your environment. Now here you can set up a check which can say none, one and block. If it is one, then uh, you the solution input will be successful even if there are errors or warning. But if it is block, then solution uh, import will not uh, uh, be completed because the sol if the solution contains a high severity issues uh, identified during the import process. IP firewall. IP firewall protects your organization data by limiting the user access to data worlds from allowed IP locations. Now here you can set up your own uh, organization's IP so that any users accessing the data worlds from that IP will only be allowed to access the data worlds information. Now uh, you can set an IP range. You can set up those by using IPv4 or IPv6 range and uh, as you see over here you can specify those ip addresses and it will allow uh, uh, access to that particular uh, uh, say machine only if it belongs to that particular ip range now the benefit of this it prevents token replay attacks uh, it mitigates data exfiltration threats uh, and uh, it protects organizational data by just limiting access to the data was from specific ip locations IP cookie binding is basically all about um, protecting the database against cookie replay attack. Now, imagine if you're logged into a system and if say uh, that, that and once once you log into the system, you get basically a cookie. Uh, the cookie has basic authentication uh, information for uh, the connection established between the Microsoft 365 uh, Power Platform network. Okay. Now, what happens if that cookie is taken from your system and then pasted into some different system? Uh, so what will happen is like if this setting is enabled, then the user will not be able to uh, access the cookie as it will invalidate the IP address from which it is accessed. And uh, those invalidation uh, will be flagged to the user and then user can take further action basis of that. So that means from a cookie perspective also, uh, this particular system, uh, if it is enabled using the managed environment, it will be more secured. So it's basically a real-time solution, which means it can detect and prevent cookie replay attack as soon as they occur, providing an added layer of security. Now, customer manage key. Now, uh, by default, uh, uh, all the uh, keys are managed by Microsoft. It is Microsoft managed keys uh, within Power Platform. So Power Platform provides this customer managed encryption key for your added data protection control where you can self-manage the database encryption key. Now, CMK, customer managed key, offers data protection to encrypt your data using the encryption key from your own key vault. So you can connect to your own key vault and then from that point onwards, all the uh, key management responsibility will be yours. But make sure that if you exactly know what to do, then only use this functionality because what might happen is like you may eventually uh, lock up your own tenant if you do not manage your key properly or if a malicious administrator get holds of the key and then uh, they may try to do something which they are not supposed to do within your organization. So. This is also a useful feature if you want to have your own set of keys defined rather than using the Microsoft provided keys. Customer logbox. Sometimes uh, a uh, Microsoft support team needs to have access to your environment so that uh, you get 
uh, to uh, like say troubleshoot the issue which you are facing or maybe if there are genuinely microsoft related uh, issue uh, within your organization's tenant so if microsoft wants to have some sort of a conversation with your um, team members or like an admin team uh, to access the customer data then microsoft will uh, send a logbox request and the logbox request needs to be approved by an admin so that microsoft can troubleshoot the information and get your issues resolved now here in this case there is a possibility that microsoft may access customer data just for troubleshooting purposes and you can revoke those requests uh, uh, once this particular uh, access uh, details are sorted out extended backup now extended backup allows extended backup retention period from seven days to 28 days now remember this is only for managed environment now for uh, what you can do is like by running this powershell command script this uh, backup retention period can be extended from the default seven days to some value which is 14 21 or 28 days now for extending the backup retention period beyond seven days is supported only for managed environment as i said to you the new setting for the backup retention period applies to all the existing and the future backups dlp for desktop flows now what happens is like when you set up data loss prevention policy there is special arrangement for desktop flows now the desktop flows uh, can do a lot of complicated things so in order to control those complicated things uh, dlp for desktop flows uh, basically uh, will you know like it, it it will govern the desktop flow models and individual models actions in power automate now users can't run the desktop flows from a cloud flow if the desktop flow violates any dlp so when you create a dlp policy a background job scans all the flows within your environment and evaluates them and then suspends the flow that violates the policy now remember if you set up the dlp policy in a non-managed environment uh, then uh, for desktop flows then it will not work it will only work for managed environment and it will clearly give you a message as shown here like desktop flows in non-managed environments are not governed by the dlp policy so this is also one uh, bit of nice functionality within the managed environments app insights data export now uh, what you can do is like in case you want to track all the application related or system related errors within power platform you can export the data to the Azure Application Insight. Azure Application Insight is a separate services within Microsoft Azure based on Azure Monitor. Now, Application Insight will help you render charts, graphs, data, information with regards to errors, warnings, usage access within your organization. Now, Application Insight environment must be a unique environment for a specific tenant. Okay. Now, this can be done using undergoing uh, to analytics and under data export. You can export the Azure application inside, export data to the Azure application inside. And once it is connected, then maybe within 24 hours, you will be able to see all the visuals or reports within application insights. Catalog in Power Platform. The catalog in Power Platform basically promotes collaboration and productivity. Now, what? is a cataloging process is basically just think about it like it is kind of a uh, a centralized repository which will store various artifacts now the artifacts can be uh, components related to canvas app model driven app power automate flows power apps component framework control custom con uh, connectors now there is a basically a process defined within this catalog the catalog is basically a model driven app which you can install from the app source now the main focus is on reusability across the organization now pack commands are also available for catalog management now the cataloging process is basically first you create the artifact like say take for example if you have any reusable component within your organization you create that component you submit that for approval once it is approved you store that component within your centralized repository and what an end user can do they can start discovering and once they identify that hey this is the component which i want to be used in my another project then they can acquire the component and then make use of it so that within a big organization you uh, eliminate the process of reinventing the wheels so if someone has already created some component why not use it across various departments so this is mainly about catalog process app description with copilot now this 
I'd say only works with model driven app. So whenever you provision a model driven app, and once you start uh, saving the information from the model driven app and start publishing it. Now, many times we have seen that people don't put the description of the app. So there is a button presented over here called as create description using AI, like artificial intelligence. It helps you create the description of an app by artificial intelligence. Okay, It just scans through the table, scans through the controls which you have placed within your uh, model driven app. And then it tries to uh, uh, put around some text uh, describing the functionality of that particular app. Now, this capability is powered by Azure OpenAI service. Now, to use this capability, your app must be in a managed environment and it is only available for model-driven app. Till date, I have uh, uh, I looked into the Canvas app. Now, the Canvas app does not have a description functionality using AI. So, currently, it is only available for model-driven app. Now, uh, this is all about all the 16 features within the 16 features of the managed environments within Power Platform. Now, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to go through each and every feature and try to create a separate video out of it. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video.